Hey guys, it's Leanna. I'm here today to talk about the series that I plan to finish in 2021. As a fantasy reader, that is ever my struggle, being in the middle of 50 billion series, wanting to start new series, but also wanting to finish the ones I'm already in. It's a struggle. So I'm trying to prioritize series that I'm in the middle of next year. Maybe not every series that I've ever started, but the series that are going to be on this list are the ones that I would really, really like to finish. For that reason, I didn't put any series on this list that will not be finished. That is to say, they might have more books out that I haven't read yet, but they are not completed, so I cannot finish them because they are not finished. <laughs> there are other series I'm in the middle of that I will hopefully be continuing with in 2021, but again, not on this list because these are series that I want to finish. I think that's clear. Okay, first is Lord of the Rings <laughs> by J.R.R. Tolkien. I read The Fellowship of the Ring in January of 2020, and I thought that I would get around to reading the other two books in the rest of 2020. 2020 was... 2020. So it didn't happen. But I do absolutely still want to finish reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So there's no reason that I can't do it in 2021. I mean, there may end up being many reasons why I can't finish it because we've learned not to really plan ahead or to, to expect the unexpected, I guess. But as of right now, I don't see any reason why I can't finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Maybe if instead of spending all my time watching and rewatching and re-re-rewatching and re-re-re-re-re-re-rewatching the extended editions of the movies, I could just, I don't know, maybe fucking read them. <laughs> Next up, The Rearia Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. I've mentioned a few times my, the saga of me buying Michael J. Sullivan books because I kept finding out that the book that I bought was actually the prequel to another book. So I have like 50 billion Michael J. Sullivan books. I'm in the middle of the Riri Revelations, which is the one that sets this all off. So I'd like to finally finish reading the Riri Revelations, which I've been reading kind of a bit here and there over a couple of years now. And then I can finally read the Riri Chronicles and then Age of Myth. So yeah, but gotta rin it, gotta finish Riri Revelations first. Next up is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I really thought I'd finish this in 2020, but it's not, on, the last book isn't on my December TBR and I don't really see myself squeezing it in. Yeah. <laughs> It's a really short series. I've been having a really good time with it. It is this sort of YA murder mystery type series that I'm, it's just a good time. Like I think I've read the first two books. I think I read each of them in one day, respectively. And yeah, I think the third one is the shortest. So I'd really just, you know, like to find out how it all ends. There's no reason that I can't. That it's like 300 pages. Next up is Broken Earth by N.K. Jemisin. I'm actually like halfway through the last book, The Stone Sky but I didn't finish it before the end of the month that I was reading it in. And then I didn't get around to finishing it after that in a month, in months that it wasn't on my TBR. And then I don't know why they seem kind of, maybe because I started reading The Broken Earth in summer and maybe because the landscape is so kind of barren, they seem like summer reads to me. So I didn't quite finish Stone Sky and then we were getting into fall and winter and it just wasn't feeling like the time for it. I really absolutely want to finish it because I'm absolutely loving The Broken Earth trilogy and I want to see how it ends, but finish it's a stone sky didn't seem like a cozy fall read <laughs> and, and not like a christmas time read so i do want to finish it in 2021 and i don't see why i shouldn't because again i'm at least halfway through stone sky next up is fury born by claire legrand i loved fury born the first book i read an arc of it and then i reread it and then i never actually read the second book king's bane because i heard kind of terrible things about it and then i kind of said i was like okay, okay i'll wait until the third one comes out and if people say that the third one, like if people who had issues with the second one, but did go on to read the third one, if they say, okay, she fixed it. <laughs> you know, cause like if it's a second book in a series, it's kind of eh, like it has the possibility to course correct. So I, since I loved the first book so much and I generally like Claire Legrand's writing, I wasn't willing to like give up. And I mean, I haven't actually read Kingsman, so maybe I'll love it. I shouldn't just take people's word for it, but there are people that I trust. And like the, there are reasons for disliking it sounded like things that I would also hate. But so now the third book, Lightbringer is out. They're all out. I've heard generally positive things about Lightbringer. So I'd want to basically find out what I think and just kind of wrap this all up. I really hope it ends up being good because I love Furyborn, the first book, a lot. Next up is Shatter Me by Tahita Mafi. I was kind of on a Shatter Me roll and I was kind of devouring those books, but I've heard nothing but disappointment and horror at the last book Imagine Me, which TBQH, when I saw the cover reveal for Imagine Me, I was just like, that's an awful cover. And I know that's shallow, but it's a truly atrocious cover. And then people who like me, like Shatter Me, they're into it, did not like Imagine Me. They're like, it's a terrible ending to the series. And I'm like, right now I still feel generally positive towards Shatter Me. And I would, I don't really want to start hating Shatter Me. And I feel like 
usually when a series ends badly, it kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth and ends up resulting in me kind of hating the series altogether. Happened a couple times. <laughs> so right now I'm still in a good place with Shatter Me, but also like it, it's bothering me that I haven't finished it. So I am a completionist, so I would like to finish it. Next up is an Ember in the Ashes series by Saba Tahir. This is like a long awaited conclusion. Uh, I love Ember in the Ashes and Torch Against the Night. I was less keen on the third book, uh, Reaper at the Gates. I, I still kind of feel like things are being drawn out a bit too much. Um, I feel like it could have been a trilogy. I don't know that a lot of the plot threads that are kind of introduced in Reaper at the Gates needed to be. It feels like things are being dragged, but I do really want to see how this concludes. And I did love the first two books in it. And I feel like Reaper in the Gates, it's a quartet. So it's like a tough, like we're used to a trilogy kind of arc. Um, Maybe that's why it feels that way. Usually to me, like series are either like massive series that go on and on or it's a trilogy or a duology, but four is just awkward. So the book three to me feels almost the way that a lot of people feel about a lot of middle books and trilogies. I actually tend to like middle books and trilogies. I'm the weird one. And if this was a trilogy, if this of those three, that my the set, Torch Against the Night, the second one is my favorite. Reaper of the Gates, it feels like a middle book, like middle book syndrome. But I do want to see how all this ends. And I think I may need to reread the books that came before it. I don't actually, I don't know that I need to, but I kind of want to because I really liked Ember in the Ashes. And it's narrated by Steve West and Fiona Hardingham, who are two of my all time favorite narrators, especially when they're together. Next up is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I really thought I would finish The Dragon Republic this year, but to be quite honest, when I picked up The Dragon Republic briefly, because I was like, oh, I kind of feel like this right now. It was quite late at night and I was like, I don't think I remember enough about Poppy War. So I read Poppy War right when it came out. And it's been a minute. So when I was reading Dragon Republic, I was like, who? <laughs> like, I remember all the broad strokes and I remember a lot about Rin, but a lot of the other specifics about the politics and the specifics about the situation that she's in at the end of Poppy War, it's kind of hazy. And I feel like I need a refresher. Because Poppy War is so harrowing, I'm not super keen on rereading it, but I know I need to. And I do really want to read Dragon Republic and Burning God. And in order to do that, I do think I need to reread Poppy War. So we're, this is both a series that I want to finish and also that I'm going to need to start again in 2021. Next up is the Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. I thought actually that I'd finish it in 2020, but you know, it didn't happen. I'm about halfway through the second book. So I'm like literally halfway through the, the trilogy. So I would like to read the second half of Royal Assassin and then read Assassin's Quest, um, and also then start Mad Ship. I'm absolutely loving Robin Hobb's writing. I can see why she's such a favorite. It's just such a cozy, fully realized world uh, that she writes that you just kind of like melt into. I love Fitz as a main character, Night Eyes. Oh my God, like so many things in Royal Assassin, they aren't even heartbreaking or heart-wrenching moments. It's just the Robin Hobb's writing. I'm just melting and oozing the whole time I'm reading it because I feel so many feels for all these characters. <laughs> well, mainly Fitz, but other characters. Oh, it's just, she's like playing my heart like an ex. Like she's, I feel like I'm being manipulated, <laughs> but it's working and I'm here for it and it's beautiful. Next up is the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. This is a very similar situation to the Poppy War. I read The Baron the Nightingale when it came out, which is now three to four years ago. And I really liked it. And then I've been meaning to read the second and third book since then. And I just, it's been so long now that I'm pretty sure I need to reread The Bear and the Nightingale because I also, I did try reading The Girl in the Tower um, like a year ago. I picked it up around, I think I might've been like last Christmas, I picked it up and I was like, this seems like a good time of year for it. And I was reading the first chapter and I was like, I don't remember <laughs> almost anything from Bear and the Nightingale except like the general vibe. And I was like, okay, I don't know who anyone is anymore. I, should, I need to reread The Bear and the Nightingale. So I need to both finish and start the Winter Night Trilogy in 2021. Next up is the Age of Madness trilogy by Jo Abercrombie. This is the third and final book of that trilogy is coming out next September. And I am so hyped for it. I did hear, which is a relief to me, that Jo Abercrombie does intend to continue writing more books in the first law after this. Because, dude, dude, I need more. Like, I know I'm getting one more, but I need more even than that. Like, I, if the next book that's coming out, if that was going to be it, never more first law ever again, I would cry. So... I do believe he's writing more First Law. Thank God. But A Little Hatred, the first book in the Age of Madness, I was like the best Abercrombie yet. And then The Trouble with Peace was even better than A Little Hatred. And the next book, which I don't remember what the name of is, and I think I said a completely wrong name for it in my review of Trouble with Peace, whatever the third one is going to be called. I'm not risking saying the wrong thing again. <laughs> whatever it is, it's got to be amazing. 
it's gonna be great <laughs> i am there's oh i have so many questions and so many things that i want to see and so many things that need to be resolved but knowing abercrombie they might just not be resolved and ah uh, uh, i need it i need it now <laughs> next is arc of the scythe by neil schusterman i read scythe a couple of years now at this point this might be another bear in the nightingale poppy war situation where i might need to reread scythe I don't, I don't know. I haven't tried reading, fuck, what's it called? The second one. Thunderhead. I haven't tried it. I'm going to try it and see if like, I'm like, if it comes back to me, like, oh yeah, I know what's happening. If not, <laughs> then I may need to reread Scythe and then read Thunderhead and read The Toll. I really liked Scythe. I've heard amazing things about the second and third books in the series. People seem to think that the quality was carried throughout. Some people even seem to like Thunderhead more. I own Thunderhead. I don't own The Toll. So... I would like to read it. And last is The Chronicles of Prydain by Lord Alexander. I read The Book of Three on my TBR this month. So as of the filming of this video, I haven't yet read The Black Cauldron, which is the second book. I own all The Chronicles of Prydain and I love the Disney movie, The Black Cauldron. And so far my experience with the books is that they are, they have the, all the charm and magic and wonder and humor of the movie, but more. So it's everything that I loved about the movie, but, but to the max. And I'm absolutely loving it. They're really short books. I really loved Lloyd Alexander's books when I was a kid, but for some reason I never read the Prydain books. I read several other of his standalones for kids. So I did really like his writing style then. And I think it still holds up, which is the mark of a good writer. Like children's books, you should be able to, if it's a good book, you should be able to read it as an adult, even if it's meant for children. Like how Neil Gaiman writes. <laughs> so they're really fun, whimsical, quirky, traditional fantasy adventures that I'm loving. And I would like to read the rest. So let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these series that I'm intending to read, if you would like to read any of the series that I'm intending to read, if you would like to dissuade me from reading any of the series that I intend to read. <laughs> Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.